Back in 2019, the original Redout was released on Nintendo Switch, having previously been released years earlier on other major platforms. The Switch version was seemingly the result of the efforts of an extremely small team within developer 34 Big Things. In fact, only a single developer is credited with specifically working on the Switch version. It launched in a somewhat rough state, and though it would ultimately be patched to the point of providing a stable 30fps racing experience, and would eventually be freed of infamous publisher Nicholas, it struggled to impress against other futuristic racers on Switch like the launch title Fast RMX or VD Dev's Rise Race the Future, which would launch just a couple months after Redout. For myself, though I was interested, it just never felt as good to play as other futuristic racers on the platform, or icons like F-Zero or Wipeout. Fast forward a few years, and while I was busy reviewing Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Redout 2 was released on Nintendo Switch. It was originally intended to release alongside the other versions a few weeks earlier, but was delayed at the last minute for extra polish. Now, 34 Big Things is under the much more reputable publisher Saber Interactive, which means Redout 2 and its Switch port likely received much more support than the original release. So, how does the game stack up? Can this sequel live up to its inspiration where the original could not? And can the Switch version deliver a comparable experience to other platforms? Let's find out. To start with, in terms of straight gameplay, Redout 2 is a huge improvement over the original. It maintains the focus on combining strafing and turning along with requiring you to take pitch into account, but the actual feel of the game is so much better. Zipping around a track effectively still takes practice, but vehicles feel much more responsive. Add to this that there is a greater focus on teaching the player to play, with the first three stages of single player walking you through all of the major concepts of piloting your craft, and you just have a smoother experience overall. Playing at 60 FPS on Xbox Series X is an absolute joy, even if I still need a little practice. The frame rate is mostly locked outside of a few select stages, which can momentarily cause noticeable hiccups. But it should come as no surprise that the Switch version will need to make some compromises as compared to this one. Both resolution and frame rate take a pretty big hit on Switch. Frame rate is dropped to 30 FPS, which, while not unexpected, has a noticeable impact on a racing game that's this fast. You can cover a lot of ground in a single frame, so having half as many means you're covering double the amount of track before your view updates. I should also note that frame pacing seems to be a pretty regular issue here, meaning that those 30 frames are not always spaced evenly over the course of each second, resulting in a slight judder to motion. Resolution appears to be dynamic, averaging between 612 and 648. Temporal anti-aliasing makes it a little hard to get accurate counts during races, and I suspect that in the heat of a race, resolution likely drops lower than those numbers. Much like the frame rate, on paper, these numbers aren't bad for a cross-platform release on Switch this late into the console's life. However, once again, the speed of the game comes into play here. The busy visuals combined with motion blur and artifacting from the temporal anti-aliasing can create a very rough image. It isn't unplayable by any means, but you may find yourself bumping into a few walls simply because you couldn't really see them from as far away. While I'm normally a huge proponent of both anti-aliasing and motion blur, this is an instance where I'd honestly like to see an option to turn them off. Yes, it would technically result in a more pixelated image, but it would also be free of temporal artifacts that hamper the already low resolution. I should note that temporal solutions work great in slower paced games, like for example the recent Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which managed to make 540p look good even on a big screen. But here, where the image is changing so much in every frame, I just don't feel like it works well. Now, while these things may make learning new courses slightly more difficult, I do still maintain that I'm having a good time with Redout 2. The course design itself is largely excellent, and the Switch version manages to maintain some elements of the visual feature set from the other versions. For example, screen space reflections along the surface of the track really look great when they pick up the bright neon lights from some environments. On the other hand, model complexity has been greatly lowered in spots, sometimes to a hilarious degree. If you put the two versions side by side, you may notice some missing geometry around the edges of tracks, or some buildings that only loosely resemble their original form. But at the end of the day, it's hard to tell when you're zipping down the track, so while these trees may take it a little far, they're really only noticeable in those slow opening track flybys. 
Textures, of course, also take a hit, but once again, in the context of actual gameplay, it's hard to spot. One cutback that does have a more legitimate effect is the number of racers on the track. On Xbox Series X, you have the option to have as many as 12 total racers on the track, including yourself. On Switch, this is cut in half, maxing out at 6. This can make the tracks feel a bit more barren. Presumably, this is a performance-saving technique, as conceptually, a situation in which all 12 cars happen to be on screen at the same time may cause significant slowdown. Still, it's an instance of an adjustment being more than just cosmetic and having an actual effect on gameplay. Now, somewhat apart from all that, I did have one other question that I wanted to look into, and that's how does Redout 2 on Switch compare with the original's Switch port? Obviously, both are running at 30 FPS, and I will give the original credit for being extremely stable in this department, generally a little more so than the sequel. That being said, the original is also significantly less visually complex, and I personally just find it a less attractive game overall. As for resolution, both turn in essentially the same range, averaging in the low 600s. Once again, given the significant uptake in environmental complexity and effects, this is actually somewhat impressive. So while it's easy to write off the Switch version when compared to more powerful platforms, it is worth noting that it's managed to maintain essentially the same performance metrics as the previous Switch release, despite being a graphically more impressive game than the original. With that in mind, your impressions of Redout 2 on Switch are going to rely heavily on the context in which you view it. Against the Xbox Series X version, or even some other futuristic racers on Switch, it isn't going to impress visually, and cutbacks to the number of racers will definitely make it feel like a lesser version in some regards. However, against the prior release from this series on Switch, it is almost entirely an improvement, save for some framerate imperfections. When it comes to the raw gameplay, however, I do highly recommend that fans of F-Zero or Wipeout check this one out, even if, like me, you didn't quite click with the first one. If you think you'll be alright with the caveats on Switch, of which there are admittedly quite a few, having this on the go is a great bonus. Some options to customize the visual experience could really improve this version. If you do pick it up, I'd love to hear what you think, so give me a shout on Twitter using the handle on the screen, and if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing to Nintendo World Report TV. You can find a whole lot more from us at NintendoWorldReport.com, and you can join our Discord to chat about this or anything else using the link in the description. My name's John Rarden, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.